I'm letting it ride, but I'm letting it ride. I think it's because I'm I'm not I'm kinda ready, but I'm kinda not ready. And you know how it is. When you every time you think you're ready, you're not ready. And I wasn't ready. Now I can't find that thing that I put the thing on top of the thing. Thing. Or is it, whatever, you know what, let's just, uh, we'll use this thing. What is this? What is this? Is it okay? No, this one okay? This one's fine, right? Yeah, we're gonna use this. Use this. Letting it ride out, I guess, you know, why not, man? We've been doing a, we, we deserve a ride out. Y'all deserve the ride out. We deserve it. So let's take a little taste of it. We don't get it very often. The right out, right here. You usually don't get this. You know what? I'm getting into too early. We don't deserve it. Never mind. I'm taking it back. Jimmy, get out of here. You did good, Doug. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Really appreciate it, Jimmy. I think I, I need you to go, Jimmy. Please, there's children about. Jimmy, 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 please. Por favor, boy, oye, Jimmy, please, por favor, eh, eh, vete, coño, pero vete de aquí, bro. Tú tienes una cosa ahí. Que... Thank you very much. How you doing? He cultura, he cultura, he cultura, he cultura, da, 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 da. he cultura. He called Tura. He called Tura. He called Tura. However you say it, that's how you say it. Now and forever, I don't make the rules. I just make the rules. I am Studio Moguro. Studio M-O-G-U-R-A. You know how he goes. Hit me up at the PayPal. Hit me at the Cash App. All donations go toward the making of my independent film, my independent animated pilot. Seriously? Trying to get it off the ground. It's, it's there. It's just I'm broke. And I need money. To make it happen because I don't want to be an asshole and I want to pay the actors, you know, because I learned that when you pay people, they actually do the job and they do the job better than when you don't pay them. Okay. And if I ask people to do me this favor, come over here, they, they don't show up. They don't, they don't take it seriously. When I tell them I'm going to give you $200 if you show up, they show up early. So that's what we're trying to do. So please, by all means, support with a PayPal donation and a cash app donation. And if you put your name in the memo for the donation, I will put your name a as a producer and in the end credits of either the International Horror Association pilot or the uh, end credits of The Strategist, which is the feature film that we're trying to put, uh, get off the ground. So please donate by all means. If you don't want to donate and you want something more tangible, check out my book, Full Moon Nights, available on Amazon. Also available in hardcover on Barnes & Noble. It is a chronicle of the Miami rave scene in the early 2000s. Basically a story of me going to this, part, this the rave party that took place off the Palmetto. And it was crazy. It was all ages. It was nuts. It was just, it was just you know, insane. And it was a lot of fun. And it was a big part of my life. And this is the book that tells you, hey, this thing happened. Also check out my comic shop, octotaco.com, which is also my blog. And it was where I put my personal comics up. If you want to see them and if you want to buy them, if, you wanna, if you're interested in one of them, go ahead and show me a message and we can talk. And then lastly, check out uh, my uh, uh, Tee Public, which is my T-shirts. And you can get the he official Hikotura T-shirt on my Tee Public shop, as well as my other great designs, including the very popular Dan Lebetard Hitchcock profile design, which a lot of people have been buying that and a lot of people like that. And I really appreciate your support on that. And again, for the millionth time, I've... Forgot to put the last QR code, which is the link to my Spotify playlist, which has my entire discography from 1999 through 2003 uh, uh, with my latest release, The Reflection Blinds You From Seeing the Truth. Just look up El Topo, uh, El Topo Miami on Spotify, and you should be able to find me and find the playlist and just listen to all my music and find out my albums and all that kind of shit. Uh, if not, check out the Bandcamp link right there in front of you. And you can purchase my music directly, which is the best way, because in Bandcamp, I get like $4 per purchase, and in fucking Spotify, 6 million streams will get me 200 bucks. Thank you, Vietnam. Seriously. Can Vietnam, one more time, I appreciate you for the streams. Thank you so much. You have no idea how, how you came through. So appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate Vietnam. 
Um, so yeah, so check that out. Okay, we're done. That's it, bro. You know, and we gotta go through that, man. I'm sorry, bro. I know a lot of you are like, bro, stop with the thing and get into the thing. You like that, and I understand, and I get it. You know, because I'm the same way. I'm like, bro, start the stream. Get over. But motherfuckers gotta eat, bro. And motherfuckers are dying, are tired of doing, you know, taxes. We want to do something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more better, a little more creative, a little bit more fun. And this is what we got. Okay, this is rolling. This is good. We're heading into the regular season. It's about to start soon. And it's going to pop. And it's going to pop out. And let me tell you, it's going to pop out like the hernia. Again, which I'm still dealing with since Jimmy Butler missed that three against the Celtics. I kid you not. He took the three. He missed it. And I got a hernia. It like, my, my belly, oh God. And I had to drop to the floor and I couldn't decide if I was in pain because Jimmy missed the three or if I was in pain because of, I think I just popped my fucking hernia. And then I tried to stand up and I realized, oh no, it's the fucking hernia. So yeah, still dealing with that shit. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Me go to the doctor and they're like, what is it? And then I'm like, yo, the hernia. And they're like, oh, cool, here. And they like do the fucking, this is like, you know, how like, you know, like the, 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 the one punch, one inch punch that Bruce Lee does. He's like, look at that. Like that. They do that to you. Oh, and it's like, oh. and that's what happens. That's how they fix you and fix the hernia. Um, which was kind of like this game. You know, playing the Detroit Pistons and playing any shitty ass team with the heat is like, you know, just dealing with your, anno your annoying fucking hernia. It keeps popping the fuck out, you know, and you got to do the. Así, tú haces así, tú sabes. Te pone, eh, you put your hand right there and you push in. You, you gotta blow out. First thing, you gotta blow out, all, blow out all, your, all your air, right? Blow out all your air. So there's nothing. There's nothing, right? There's nothing there. Okay, no, you blow out all your air. Okay, my bad. Hold on, let me take a breath. I almost died there. Uh, after you blow out all your air, then you like push on the top of the belly, but you push it in and you push it down. And it's like, uh, every time. And that's what playing these these fucking teams is like. You gotta push it in, and you gotta push it down, and you're like, Ugh! and then you win, and then you feel better. It's literally it. We are. I don't know what we're gonna do, because we got a lot of these bad fucking teams to finish off the season, and that's many people would be like, oh, that's great, that's awesome. But if you're a Heat fan. And you know he culture. You know that shit is like, mm, I don't know, bro. Because you look at these motherfuckers play. They know they can beat these guys. We had no business being in, having, letting them be in the game. Okay? And I understand that not everybody is the, the Boston Celtics, apparently, because they've got like a super team called fucking Nadia that we know their name. I'm currently munching on. Noni's Bakery Biscotti. Chocolate almond. I love these things. I love biscotti. Biscotti's awesome. My mom made biscotti once when I was little. And I was like, this is strange. I've never had something like this before. And it was good. But it was like, uh, you know, I didn't really, it was no chocolate on it. And then when I discovered that, oh, wait, there's biscotti that has chocolate on it? Oh, this seems amazing. I love it. So, and these were buy one, get them free, by the way. So it was a good deal. I don't even remember what I was saying. Who cares what I was saying, right? No, I don't remember what I was saying. I don't know, man. I know we're supposed to wipe the floor with these people, like the Celtics wiped the floor with the fucking Golden State, right? Like, that's what we were supposed to do? That's what we were supposed to do, right? With the fucking, uh, with the Pistons. He, now with whoever else we're going to play that sucks. We're supposed to wipe the floor with them, right? You know we don't do that. We, we, I don't, I don't, I really honestly want to say we have had three blowouts this season. Three. There's no way we have had more than five. If we have more than five, look, I, I'm positive. It's less than ten. Less than ten blowouts this season for sure man 30 plus something plus games that we've won 35 games 36, whatever it is how many of those games did we blow people out we don't blow nobody out 
We don't blow nobody out, but that's rare. When we're blowing somebody out, it's the second quarter, and we know that team's going to come back on us before halftime. You know it. This is what riding the snake is. This is what drinking the juice is. This is what drinking the ooze is. This is what taking the water of life is. Is you take this this team and you take this culture and you know their habits, you know their tendencies, you know you can read them a lot better. Once you've taken the juice, you it's because you can read this team now. So if you've taken the juice, you drank the ooze, you've taken the water of life, and you follow Butler Al Gaib. then you know the habits of this team, and you know when they play these kind of teams, it is not a surprise for them to eat, to be competing with the team, not to blow the team out. Because let me tell you, man, 15 points up in the league, that's not blowing anybody out anymore. You're up 15, and that's, that's not, you're not blowing nobody out. That's not a blowout. I'm watching the game, and there was a moment in the fourth quarter where, they, where Butler goes crazy, and he's, we're up, uh, we, we go up 15. And in that moment, I start talking on threads, and I'm like talking to somebody about thread on threads about you know their their anime drawing, and they took some some comment I meant totally wrong. And I literally look up, and the Heat are up five. And it was like, dude, it's the same quarter. Like not even two three minutes of pat. What the fuck? And so I've gotten to a point where I don't I don't trust a 10-point lead. I don't trust a 12-point lead. I don't trust a 15-point lead. You definitely don't trust a 12-point, 10-point fucking lead when you're playing against the Heat. You're playing against the Heat, and you're up 12, and there's like, and it's the fourth quarter, like, you know that you probably might not win that game because the Heat are going to make the push at the end of the game. Game starts with one or two minutes left when you're playing the Heat. When you're playing the Heat, game starts with two minutes left. You can watch the whole fucking goddamn game. Don't fucking matter. Just tune in the last two minutes and that's the game. No, we don't do that because, you know, we're Heat Kultura and we like to watch the whole thing. We like to enjoy the entire ride. We like the scenic route. But there's some of us that just, you know, like to show up in the fourth quarter. My dad, he like only shows up in the fourth quarter for a basketball game. And I'm sure there's people who are even worse. So they show up in the last two minutes. And that's the, you know, if there's going to be a time that you're not going to show up, show up in the last two minutes. There you go. You'll get the whole game there. And now more than ever, just because the three is so prominent and the three is like such a big fucking deal. Um, today, uh, I had to do a little learning and I'm not, I'm not, I don't even want to get into the fucking bullshit with my car. You know, all I can tell you is that people are fucking assholes, specifically people who drive fucking huge-ass trucks with these monster fucking fucking stupid-ass tires. Like they're fucking, you know, going to go off-roading on uh, on the Palmetto Expressway. And, uh, you know, pretty much I've learned is a lot of those people who drive those cars, they, drive, they are assholes because they get so aggressive. And if they see a nicer car, if they see a car that, you know, you know I don't know, they wish they had or, or might... Look, make their car look any less or whatever. It's like they get into such an aggressive manner, and they get into just they just like they they want to like kill you or something. And it's so stupid. It's like look, I'm trying to just get home. You know, and you're starting shit with me just because I'm literally like going at my own pace. And then you want to like cut me off and shit like that. And it's like you know what? No, we're not having that. And then you want to go and actually hit me? Fuck you. Fuck you. And then there was nothing I could do because, you know, sure, we could have stopped and we could argue, but then what, who's going to get the ticket? Whose insurance is going to go up? You know, that guy was a total asshole. And there was no, there was no point in even stopping. So you know what? I told him, no, that's, that's, that's too bad. And I moved on with my life. What's it? Did I stop traffic at 6 p.m. on the Palmetto? No. So you, you all who go home on the Palmetto at 6 fucking p.m., bro, you all better be kissing my fucking ass. Because I could have just stopped right there and fucking that's it, bro. Nobody's fucking going home for two fucking hours. All because fucking dudes have to have their huge trucks and then got to be in the no truck lane. 
you got to be, why is it that every person that drives a truck in Miami drives in the no truck lane? It's the most ridiculous thing is having a no truck lane because every truck, when you put up a no truck lane, every truck is going to drive on that, on that lane. It's, it's ridiculous. So it's backwards. I bet you anything, if you made a lane that said trucks only on this lane, this is only for trucks, and then you put like, you paved it out of gold, I guarantee you trucks wouldn't go on there. That's how backwards these, a lot of these people are. It's ridiculous. And then the guy has the audacity to say that, to call his, his truck a car. These people that drive these huge pickups that are just monster pickups, like they're like monster trucks. They think they're cars. They think they're in cars. They think they're like driving a sedan. It's insane. It's got to be stopped. I'm serious. But going back to the game. I don't know, man. This is going to be a weird kind of like run right now because we just can't slip. And we've got a lot. We've got the easiest fucking schedule. So if we slip at any time, I mean, like, what the fuck? But you see how we're playing. We're playing good. We've got people. We've got enough people to compete. I don't know if we have enough to beat Boston. That I don't I don't think so. I don't right now the way that it seems, no, right? Right? I mean right now the way that it seems, no. I don't think we have enough bot to beat Boston. But we said the same shit last year. We didn't think we'd beat Boston last year. We didn't think we'd beat Milwaukee last year. A lot of people didn't think we'd beat New York. So what do you do? What do we do then? What do we do? We just What? I don't know, man. I kind of I I want to fast forward through the rest of the season, man. But we need these wins more than anybody because we 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 gotta move up, man. We can't be this whole playing shit and. But then this team is just so fucking weird. Look at that. We're now we're in six. And and I don't like that six spot, man. I don't like that six spot and. I honestly would rather... Wow, look how much the 76ers have dropped. Jesus fucking Christ. Those poor bastards. Hey, you're right. The playoffs barely do end in in a, in a blowout. And, 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 de and I mean, we know throughout history that Spo is definitely not a, a blowout coach, which is like... It's going to be, I just, I, I want to fast forward to the Celtics game in the playoffs already. I just want to get there. I want to see what they got. I want to put their 50 plus wins to the test. You know? They're 19 and 10 away. That's really mediocre. I'm surprised by that. I mean, I know it's still good, but it's just... 29 fucking home wins? That ain't right. That don't smell right. That don't smell right, bro. 29 home wins for the Celtics doesn't smell right. Bucks, 25 wins at home. That doesn't smell right. Magic, 21 wins at home. That doesn't smell right either. The Heat, 17 and 13. We're like barely above 500 at home. We're a better team on the road. What is that? The fuck is that? I mean, it's just. That's so annoying. But we see what, what what's happening with these people. Um, I mean, I don't know who the fuck that, that, that I don't really want to check the Knicks' schedule and look at that. Who cares? Who cares what the fucking schedule is? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what their schedule is. It doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is that we just keep playing. We keep playing and we beat these teams that we're supposed to fucking beat. Okay? 
That's all that matters. None of this fucking bullshit. This, the Mavericks game is a big game because that's a big test. We're going to enter the gauntlet now. We're, well, actually, we are... I think we're... Are we done with the gauntlet now, actually? Are we done with our current gauntlet? We had our 13th, 14th, and then the 23rd. So 23rd, so where are we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, tomorrow would essentially be the game 7. Okay, so we had our 7 games since the All-Star break. Pelicans, Kings, Trailblazers, Nuggets, Heat, uh, Jazz, Pistons, and then now... Uh, the Mavericks on Thursday. So that's our f- first seven game pack from the All Star break. And out of this seven game stretch, we're six and one. And is it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you again is it a success? Everyone's gonna be saying, oh, they're six and one, they went really good, but. Bro, look at who we beat, man. The only the two biggest wins that we had still are 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 is the Bucks game on the thirteenth. That's the biggest win I think we've had all season. It's the biggest win. So against the Bucks, beating their asses one twenty three because they were full force. And even then, how much were the Bucks affected by a back to back, or how much were they affected by the fact that All Star break was coming up and they had two guys that were All Stars. We were already like, mm, I don't want to deal with this shit. We thought the 76ers was a big win. We realized, no, that's a uh, mierda. That was a mierda win. I mean, this stretch of Pelicans, Kings, and and and, and Jazz, that, that and, and even the Mavericks is a good test for us because those are all playoff teams. Those are all good teams that are fighting in the West. But we lost to the Nuggets, man. And that's the team to beat. That's that's just that's how it is. That's the team to beat. So I, I don't know if this was really a successful kind of stretch of seven games. I know that if we play if this entire stretch of games, these seven games, uh, were a playoff stretch, and the you know the the teams that we had faced so far was literally the same kind of work one team would, in the playoffs would give us. Then I'd tell you, yeah, of course, we were a success because we were at 4-1 and one and we, we, we would have already won the series. But, and that's how I try and approach it now so that I can, I don't really focus on the one game loss. No, I'm like, okay, they lost this game, but how did they do overall in a seven game stretch? Because in a seven game stretch, that's how you play a seven game series. And that's how you really get a good eye on, on, on how this team is doing. Like one game doesn't fucking tell you anything in the NBA. One game tells you everything in the NFL. In the NBA, it's a series. It's a game of series, so treat it treat it like that. Treat it as such. So I I I, I don't I wanna see them win against the Mavericks. I definitely want them to finish off this 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 chunk of seven games. So that we can look at the next chunk of seven games, which is Thunder Heat. Nuggets again, Pistons, Pistons again, 76ers, and then Cavs. Out of that big stretch, out of this next one, two, three, four, five, six, and the next one, the the Cavs would be the biggest game. The Cavs and the and the, neg- the Nuggets again. But the playing the Nuggets in Miami, maybe I guess I, you could say that it, it is, it could be the same. I wasn't going to say that it's not the same because. The Nuggets are, you know, are traveling. They're they're coming from Denver to Miami, and, and like there's 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 factors that could that can make them lose a lot easier. So beating the Nuggets at home is like expected, right? But then look at our record at home. We, we're not a good team at home lately. We've been a lot better, but you know, I don't know. I don't. I I want what what's a, what's the record going to be at the end of the season? You know what I mean? Like, we're doing good now. All we need is a powerhouse seat to come in there and whip our asses, and then all of a sudden it's back to we can't do anything at home. And we win that game against the Nuggets, and it's, like, kind of expected. Is Watch and see they don't even start fucking uh, uh, 
this guy for that game or some shit. I don't know. I'm just saying that, like, that game is not the same as when you play the, you play the Nuggets and you beat the Nuggets in Denver. You know, and that's to me is... That's what we needed. We need to ensure that we at least got a really big fucking win at some point at the end of this season. And right now, we don't have many opportunities for those kind of wins. The only, only big teams that we're playing is, you know, we're playing Mavericks and Thunder who are, you know, in the playoff line. And the Thunder are, like, top in the West. But we don't, we've already talked about this, how we don't respect that, that fucking team. We don't respect the Thunder. Nobody does. And I'm sorry, the Thunder, I know you're doing good and all this kind of stuff. And I'm sorry, but that's just reality. And you know it, too. And that's what makes you upset because we don't get respect the same way. And it makes us re- upset. So I can only imagine how you feel. You know, but we were number one in the league two years ago and, and did nothing with this. So that's why you're number two. I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, they're number two. I'm not going to even be with the Celtics number, they're number one and be like, oh, my God. They had a great record last year. They had a great record the year before. They have. They always have a goddamn great record. You know, they're killing themselves. They're shooting the fucking lights out this season, man. And And... Heaven help them if they shoot their lights out just during the regular season. And they get to the playoffs and all of a sudden they're fucking eating shit. You know, but technically they shouldn't. Technically with the way that they're playing and the, 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 their concept that they're using this year, which is basically chuck up the most threes in the entire fucking league, as many as possible, build fucking humongous fucking leads, and then play the very little bit of defense that you need to play to, you know, make it hard for the other team to catch up, you know, because they won't be able to catch up because you'll play that little bit of defense and you'll still be making fucking, like, tons of more threes than they will. And that's all they're doing. You know, that's all they're doing. The, the, key, the, the key for the Heat to beat the fucking Celtics is keeping Jason Tatum under, what, 30 points? You know, like keeping some, keeping both Jalen Tatum and and Brown under thir- under thirty each, keeping that team from from scoring a hundred points, and then that's how we win. I don't know if you're gonna win like that against this team this year. That's just what I I just I don't know if you're gonna win like that with this team. I think you're you, if you to win this game. For you to win against the Celtics this year, it's gonna you're gonna have to match them shot for shot. You're gonna have to match that team shot for shot. You're gonna have to prove that you can outshoot that team. It's not gonna be def- defense. It's not gonna be sure. It'll be defense to some extent, but in 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 the end, you're still gonna have to outshoot them. I know we got. I know we got guys that can do it. And I know Jason uh, and uh, 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 this guy Brown. I know he's success susceptible to turning the ball over. And if you get a good defensive player on him, man, it, it they'll they'll own him. That's the one thing that Oladipo, you know, for all his bullshit. That's the one thing that was really really necessary. That was really needed. That I now I understand why Spo got him. You know, and it was just solely because he he could he was like. I've never seen someone handle someone else the way that he could handle Brown. Like Brown would just crumble, and turn the ball over every single time Oladipo was on him. And we're going to have to find someone to do the same shit. And I don't know if we have that on this team. Did we play that new guy from Atlanta or that guy? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think. No, we didn't. No, of course not. Rock of the Grease Buggy. <sighs> this thing comes in at 28%, right? But it has 4.5 terps, which is luscious. Crazy. I can't believe Joe, Joe, uh, Jovich got uh, 
got thrown out of the game. That's so that's so ridiculous to me. The refereeing is just it's so sad. It really is how we've if we've you know because we're so overprotective and we want to protect the sport and we want to protect like I don't know whatever. Like you've ended up diluting the game so much that any show of emotion is like considered a hostile threat. And that's ultimately what this all is all about. Is that like it, you're you're controlling these guys because you think every single moment they're gonna start fighting. You know, yeah, I go to look at fucking hockey and hockey they let motherfuckers fight. Give them two minutes and that's it. Move on with your lives. And it's just I don't know. Should we let basketball players fight? And then give them penalty, two minute penalties or, or or double technicals. Like I, that's the thing. I don't. I don't think the league is here to fight. You know, like even with the whole the whole thing, the brush up with against Butler, and the fucking Pelicans. Like that was all a, a humongous misunderstanding. That was partly this this guy. You know, at flopping on the floor and acting like he was more hurt than it was, and it made it was more of a big deal, which set other people off. And then Butler was basically had to be like, "Hey, chill." And that guy brushes Butler aside, and when you brush Butler aside, he's like, "No, no, no, I'm going to tell you, fucking chill, because there's not a big deal." And then that guy goes and grabs Butler's neck, and then that's it. It turns into a fucking bullshit. All of that was not, was nothing to be like, like you didn't ha even have to throw out anybody after that. To be honest with you, as a viewer, I think it's, I think it was pathetic. I think it was sad that we ultimately, you know, they, they, they throw, they threw guys out. Like you throw guys out if they throw a fucking punch and shit. And they're like scrapping. Okay, throw them out. But Butler didn't throw a punch. Hell, even the other guy... I would have just given him a fucking technical. But he grabbed the guy's neck, grabbed Butler's neck. And when you grab Butler's neck, he should have been thrown out. But you're throwing Butler out for what? Instigating? Get the fuck out of here. Get instigating, get instigating. It's just the fear amongst referees and the fear amongst the league is just... It's, 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 it's so... It's, it's, it's pearl clutching, dude. It's, oh my God, let me hold my purse. This guy's across the street. That's what it is. It's the stupidest thing. It's so unnecessary. And it's it's it, it does ruin the game. It pollutes every game. This a conservative mindset where you have to respect the sport and you have to respect the sport in a way that it's according to typically a Caucasian white you know, a Caucasian person. A Caucasian person in power is usually who decides how you can act. And, and I'm tired of that. Like I want my guy, I want my players to be able to show emotion. I want them to get into each other's faces, and I want them to be mature enough that they can get into each other's faces, spark a brouhaha, and then get back to the game. You know, like I, 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 I constantly feel like there's not enough entertainers in sport. Steph Curry is an entertainer. LeBron James is an entertainer. They're also athletes. And they're, and because they're like the top athletes in the league, they can also become entertainers. So it's not something that you can really do. Like like Jimmy, sometimes becomes an entertainer, but he really isn't. Jimmy's very hard nosed and just he's very lunch pail guy, and he just you know puts his head down and he works. And then when he starts getting it, then he becomes then he gets loud, and he'll get in your face, you know. And he'll 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 go back and forth, but he's not like Draymond Green. You know, where he goes looking for it. And he's like, not like throwing it in your face or anything. Like he, I don't want to say that because he has gotten in people's faces and shit and he'll do it. But I don't think of him first as like, that's his thing. That's not, that's his thing if you push him. If you try Jimmy and you try Jimmy in the slightest and you try Jimmy just un poquito ahí, whoop, that's it. That's all you got to do to set him off. But if you go up against Jimmy one on one and you're just really just trying to, like he's gonna he's gonna he's not gonna get in your face. He's not gonna embarrass you. He's not gonna go out to embarrass you. But if you try, if you step to Jimmy, he will fucking embarrass you. And uh, 
I, I, I don't, I don't want that taken away. I like that. I like that in sports, man. I, sports and and like video games, like versus is like, or, or not even, yeah, versus video games and when that capacity, whether it's like a fighting video game or a shooting video game, whatever. It's like the only fucking places that like people can just compete against each other and not ultimately truly really kill each other. You know, it's not like war. You know. It's like you can compete against each other physically, mentally, challenge another human being, and it's like, and you can express yourself after a win or something. You know, like those are the only places you can do that. You can't do that, like at an art show. Like if you put an art show up and someone buys your painting and doesn't buy the next one, you can't be like, ah, I beat you. You know, you can't do that. Can't even do that with music. Like even if when you're going up there and you you win the fucking Grammy and shit because they gave you best artist, like you go up there and you thank all the other artists. It's not really a competition. It's just, you know, it's a competition to the point, to that to that level, because you guys sell uh, 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 albums. You, you're selling millions. You're talking about, like, at that level, it, cor- corporations make it a competition. But at the artist level, it's not a competition. It's not like sports. The Oscars are not like sports. Movies are not like sports. You, you, you know, you're competing simply at the box office because you're trying to take as much money as possible because really, honestly, you're fucking greedy. And you got to pay rent and you have kids to feed and you got to eat and all this kind of shit so you have needs, you want a fucking Ferrari. So that's why, you know, you guys are competing at the box office at the level. But really, honestly, you're not really competing because essentially what the film, what the film industry does is is tell you, hey, you know what, watch my film. No matter how bad it is, watch my film and then also love my film. Don't complain about my film. Don't critique my film. Don't fucking hate on my film. You have to like my film and you have to watch it and you have to pay money for it. That's what the that's what the film industry is like. Go to a movie theater and ask for your money back after you watch the fucking movie because it sucked ass and you didn't like it. Go to a restaurant and order food and eat it and you didn't like it, ask for your money back. You'll probably get your money back. Or you'll get a free meal or you'll get something. At the movie theater, they look at you like you're fucking crazy if you want just a fucking free coupon for another film because the, the movie that you saw, the fucking power went out. Oh, you saw most of the film. I don't give a fuck if I saw most of the film. The power went out at the end. Just give me something. Give me a fucking coupon. Can't you guys give me a fucking coupon? No. Well, I'm supposed to support every single fucking film? No, bro. It's not sports. You're, it's not. It's not a competition. No, you, you guys are gonna get your money when you get. Everybody is fine in the, in the the film industry. It's just, are you better off than the next guy? That's really it. Is that is that is that the same kind of competition that you find in in, in sports? No, man. People are competing in sports because the whole purpose of sports is to compete. It's to prove that you are a better athlete. That's how you that's what the race is. The race is who is the fastest? Who is the strongest? You know, video games, who is the smartest? <laughs> but I don't know. I went off on some tangent. I'm sorry. What do we got? We're 109 in? No, but we waited. I'm going to go a little bit longer because, yeah. you know, I had a, I was, it was making fucking coffee, bro. It took forever for the fucking water to heat up. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I was making coffee and then you're posting everything and I'm looking for the fucking, vid- the right picture to add to it and I couldn't find the right one that I wanted and then I remembered I, this is what I wanted. I had to go through a fucking journey through the internet just to find it. But it's all to entertain you, man, and give you the right carousel. You know, you got to put the right carousel with the, with the post. Uh, shit. Well, there goes Joe. That's why they got this guy. Fucking sucks for Josh Richardson. 
Josh Richardson will have sh shoulder surgery tomorrow and is out for the season. Thank you, Josh. We appreciate you coming back. It's been emotional. Um, you know, they had, you had moments throughout the season that were, like, good. You had positive moments. If I had to be real with you, I would be like, I, I do not understand why they... I mean, I understood why they brought you back because you're you're a great guy, you're a decent player, and you work well in our system, and you did, and it would have been nice to to see because you had a couple good moments that you made me feel like, shit, maybe we can trust Josh Richardson now, and uh, and so it really sucks that you know he went down the way that he did, you know, uh, that's that's really tough, but he'll be all right, you know, he'll he'll be fine. You know, he'll go to Baptist Hospital, they'll take care of him. But uh, Josh Richardson is out for the season. So we got this other guy, and now it makes more sense as to why we got that other guy. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get to this thing so I can see some, some fucking shit here. This thing's all fucked up. So, uh, Jimmy tonight versus the Pistons, 26 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals, 7 for 13. Um, I know we don't read stats here. That's not what we do. Okay? You want stats, you go somewhere. There's a million fucking places out there where you can get fucking stats, I swear to God. Don't come here for stats. You come here for just the ride, and you come here for the craziness, and you come here for my wild antics and, and the outbursts and the occasional insight and occasional, like, hmm, that's a good point. But you don't come here for stats. But let me tell you something. Last game when I was watching, we were going against uh, the music people, the jazz. The way that game was going, man, I was like, the only way he'd win this is if Jimmy puts up 30 plus. And Jimmy put up 30. Okay? And now, Jimmy had to put up 26. So now Jimmy is heating the fuck up. And this is exactly what we want. We want to see Jimmy starting to really get liquid and really get smooth and really get into the flow you know um we gotta get other guys going though you know duncan robinson has to be going into the playoffs one of the hottest fucking players in the league duncan robinson has to go into the playoffs as one of the hottest shooters in the league and, and i don't i don't know if we're going to get that from Duncan. I don't know what we're going to get from Duncan. Terry, Terry Rozier, going back to him, let me tell you something. I fucking was pissed at him the previous game because when we lost to the Nuggets, it's because he ball hogged the whole fucking fourth quarter. And the Jazz, he starts fucking facilitating and we, we win the Jazz game. You know, he starts giving it to Butler. Look at him in this game. He's giving it to Butler and he's, he picked his spots this game. This was a good game for Terry Rozier because he wasn't ball hogging. He's waiting the ball. He's waiting for the ball to come back to him. And he, when he took his shots because the call, ball came back to him, he made those shots. He made them count. That's how that guy, this, this guy's got to play. Not, I'm going to fucking be the hero and take over and I'm going to be the one to do it, do it. No. No. No, 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 no. That's going too far. Um, oh my god, I thought, you know what, I just saw, sorry, I'm going through like the feed real quick, I'm just being an asshole, but I just saw on the fucking, uh, on the feed, like a picture of Zion Williamson, right, like with a fucking like, uh, face, and I was like, don't even fucking tell me, man, before I could even read what the fucking shit said, like I was like, I knew that that motherfucker was injured, I was like, oh, there he goes. The yearly fucking Zion Williamson injury. But no, he's just saying that he would participate in the dunk contest if he was named an all-star. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Begging to be named an all-star. Get the fuck out of here. We're talking. The fucking all-star game was fucking seven fucking games ago almost. 
the fuck are you talking about? You, you'll, you'll be in the dunk contest? No, man. Are you going to be in the playoffs? Zion Williamson, are you going to be in the fucking playoffs, bro? Are you fucking kidding me talking about the All-Star game? Talk about the playoffs. And talk about hoping to fucking make the playoffs, man. Because let me tell you, bro, if the Pelicans don't make the fucking playoffs and they miss it again, if they miss the playoffs or they get bounced in the first fucking round and the first round and spanked in the first round, you get rid of Zion Williamson. That is not a good fucking player. At this point, he's not a good player, dude. For what you get, it's not enough. It's just not enough, man. Go ahead and just uh, muddy this up a bit and uh, make people understand the truth. So, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, next game, Mavericks. It's going to be, a, we got to take that game seriously. And uh, we got to go out there and just fucking really, really play a really great game. Because uh, that's going to be like this. these next stretches. Are, we got to really take advantage of these games against good fucking teams, man. Because we got to beat good fucking teams. We got to beat all of the, the good fucking teams so that we can hope to compete with the great fucking teams. Okay, because Mavericks, Thunder, those are good teams, man. Nuggets, that's a great team. So we got to win against Mavericks and Thunder, and the Wiz we got to just keep winning. I mean, we don't have a choice but to keep winning right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, we don't got a choice. We got to keep winning. Mavericks, that's a winnable game. We got to win that, so we'll win that. Thunder, that's a winnable game. We got to win that, so we should win that. Wizards, we got to win that game. There's no fucking around. Win that. And then we're going to go against the Nuggets. That's the game we want to win. We want to win that game. More than the Mavericks. More than the Thunder. More than the Wizards. More than the 76ers. More than the Knicks. More than anybody else that we're playing. More than Golden State. And Golden State will not fucking meander. You don't know what the fuck Golden State is, man. Nobody knows what Golden State is. And you know what the Golden State is? Golden State is going to be another win for the Heat. That's what Golden State is. Okay? But everybody else, there's nobody else that we're playing against that matters as much as winning against the Nuggets. Go at least splitting it with the Nuggets, man. I'm telling you, dude, like none of the other games fucking matter. Like, yes, they matter in the sense that if we win, if we don't win enough of them, we'll fucking not make it to the playoffs. So we want to keep winning. But we're at a point where, like, I mean, I I'm sure we're gonna we're not gonna go fucking undefeated from here on out, but you look at these wins and they're like, we should win these games. You know, we'll drop one against the Cavs. We gotta. We're gonna play the Cavs fucking twice. You know, so one of those games, like, I gotta imagine we'll drop against them. You know, are the Pelicans gonna beat us when they come in here? Why should they? We already beat them at, at their home. Don't tell me that, oh, because we have a bad home record. No, we're talking about are the Pelicans a good team? And we saw them. They're not a good team. They're a beatable team. The 76ers are falling like fucking, you know, De todo. We should win that game. Pistons, we should fucking beat the four times that we play the goddamn fucking Pistons. We should beat them every single fucking time. You know, we, I don't want to fuck around with this with that team. You know, we play the Wizards twice, man. We're gonna play the Wizards upcoming now, and then we're gonna play them fucking again later on. And we should win those games. The last two times we played the 76ers, we should win those games. We play the Rockets, we should win that game. The Hawks, we should win that game. Raptors, twice, the end of the season, we should win that game. So tell me where we're losing. So if we're losing anywhere, don't tell me we're losing that Nuggets game. Because then that makes everything fucking useless. It makes it all completely useless if we... Go and we win every shit against every shitty fucking team. We beat the teams that we're supposed to beat, but then we can't fucking beat the Nuggets, both at home and, and, and on the road. We can't beat the Celtics at all. 
Man, I'm not trying to fucking crap on this, bro. And I'm not trying to get lit the fuck up here, bro. But I'm going to get lit the fuck up because that's the fucking truth, bro. I want to hold this team accountable, bro. I want I want the truth with this team. I believe in this team. And I will follow, and I will follow Buller al Gaib to the fucking, you know, to the ends of the sandworm. But I, I want to go there knowing that this is this is true. And that's the thing about Dune, is that Dune is like the one story. That's why people keep saying that it's a it's a cautionary tale against the fucking uh, against fascism, it's a cautionary tale against Messiah and all stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what Herbert wanted it to be. But a lot of times you will create a piece of art or a piece of work and you will put it out there with this full intention that this is what it's meant to be. And guess what? The entire fucking audience reinterprets it as something else. And that's what happened with Dune. Dune was written to try and be a message against the Messiah. But Dune, in, in the end, turned out to be a message for the Messiah. Because, hello, spoiler alert, the motherfuckers go on for 3,500 fucking years. How is that not? A, how is that not? They, they win in the end. The difference between every other Messiah fucking movie is that Anakin Skywalker gets fucking killed. And he gets fucked. And then he doesn't he doesn't come through. He isn't the Messiah. Doesn't even last 50, 60 years. His reign of fucking terror only lasts literally 20 fucking years. Barely that. But this guy comes in here, claims he's the Messiah, proves He's the Messiah, has powers of a Messiah, rules like a Messiah. Ultimately, shit happens, but ultimately his name and his is. Is I don't want to try not to spoil it, but, you know, his his name continues, if you know what I mean. And if your name continues in that level as, as, as a reigning king, you have succeeded. Dune becomes oh you see it's a cautionary tale against Messiah is literally like five books down the line after 4,000 fucking years have passed well for 4,000 fucking years it worked out and that's essentially what's fuck, what sucks about that fucking story and that is that you want to say that it's a cautionary tale against the Messiah but really it's, it's, it does the opposite it emboldens people to believe in a Messiah because it gives them a great story of like, look at this great story of the Messiah that worked out for them. All this fucked up shit happens, but hey, that happens on the journey. So but people who say that David Lynch's point misses that, like David Lynch's version misses that point, no, you're wrong. David Lynch's version of Dune perfectly is a perfect adaptation of the fucking book. As, as perfect as you can get. Sure, there's no weirding modules, but they take that just for for film's sake. At the in the in the fucking age of uh, of in the 1980s, where fucking not everybody knew karate and mixed martial arts wasn't fucking widespread. Okay, but now today, mixed martial arts is widespread. Karate and and kung fu movies and martial arts films are widely accepted more so than they were in the fucking 80s, as a niche genre in the fucking back of the video store. Now every fucking buddy uses Wong Ping Ying and the fucking wires and you know flying all around and fucking crouching tiger. Now everybody in every fucking movie somebody does a corkscrew. Every fucking movie. Power Rangers. Lynch's adaptation really hammers that. This is what a Messiah's journey looks like. And it ends with that, that he, he, beca he proves that he's the, the, the Kwisatz Hazarach because he brings the rain. Spoiler alert. They show that at the end of the, the Lynch one, but they don't do that in the new, the new one. Spoiler alert, sorry. You should, I mean, you should have already seen this shit, so I'm not going to even fucking care anymore. Everyone watched it, right? Everyone saw it, right? Right? But I believe in Butler the same way that, you know, the Fremen believe in this guy. But we still want clarity. 
Just a little bit of clarity. Show us that, you know, like, go ahead and walk around the room and come to our faces and tell us, like, stories about our mother. And, and, and when you, by, by that, I mean, go out there and beat the fucking Nuggets. Go out there and beat the fucking Nuggets and tell the Nuggets to their faces that their mother, was, you know, lost her eye because a rock hit her in the face, you know, back in the day when this planet was called Dune. That's what we need. That's the clarity we need. If we see that, if we hear that, we're all on our knees. Lisa Magayib. Bolar al Galib. Mandi. <sighs> that's, that's, that's really all we have. You know, it really is. Because all these other wins are like winnable games that we should win. We should really, I mean, look how we're playing. We're, we're playing decent enough, we're playing good enough that we're just building, 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 building a lot of momentum with this train. But none of this shit will matter if we can't beat the Nuggets, if we can't handily make sure we beat the 76ers, if we don't come out there and fucking whip the goddamn Warriors' asses after the fucking Celtics whip their fucking asses. What are we saying going into the fucking, into the playoffs? Oh, we can handle the first round person, but can we get past the second round person? If it's a good matchup, we're going to be fucked. If we get the Celtics in the first round, we're going to be fucked because. I think it's, I, I, a lot of people, you know, I, 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 I was worried that like, okay, maybe the, the, that's what they want. They're just going to hang around the eighth seed and just, you know, catch the Celtics in the first round and get it done early this time. But I don't think that'd be good for the Heat. I think it'd be better for the Heat if they didn't face the Celtics and if they a, until it was the last fucking round. I think if they meet the Celtics in the first round, the Celtics are going to be hyped to really, really go out there and beat their asses. They're going to go up 3-0 on us. And... I know I've seen this team do the crazy things, but I don't think they're, they're that crazy that they can come back down 3-0 against the Celtics this year. So I'd rather the Celtics go through the fucking gauntlet the same way we go through the fucking gauntlet and meet them up at the end and then put the pressure on them that we're at the end. Sure, they're going to be super highly motivated because this is exactly what they were waiting for all fucking year long to get to the fucking end where they were last year and got beaten by us. And guess what? We're, they're getting us again. So that's, that's, but I'd rather get them like that after they win through the first and the second fucking round. Then getting them right at the beginning of the playoffs when they're, you know, probably at their freshest. It'll be a lot easier. So that's why winning a lot of these games is important. Gotta win enough games that we don't end up eight, we end up in the mid, we, we could end up third. Maybe fourth. You know? All said and done. If we keep winning, we could get past the Knicks. We, we should... We, we'll, if we get past the Knicks and we keep winning, okay, we got we to gotta match up with the Magic because then the Magic will fall. Okay? Because we beat the Magic already. So we have the tiebreaker again. So we'll, 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 we'll skip them. But we won't skip them if they've got more wins than us. And... Can't let that happen, man. Can't let that happen. We, I want to get out of that. I don't really want to be in... I, I want to get to the three. Because I don't even want to be in the four spot. So I have to face the number five. Four or five, that's always the... Such a shitty fucking series, dude. Don't want that series. Because that's, that's tough, and you're always matching up against someone who's basically your mirror match. And I don't like that. I want to go against... I want to... Be at the three, go against the six, be at the two, go against that. But you're not, we're not going to top Bucks and we're not going to top Celtics. You know, we're not going to top those guys. The only people that I can see us topping is, is Knicks and Magic getting into the four spot. And it's going to be really difficult to catch up to the, to, to the Cavs unless, unless we beat them. 
It's the only way. We have to keep winning, and we got to beat the Cavs these two times. We can beat the Cavs these two times. That'll really go a long way. We beat the Knicks. That's one time. That'll really go a long way. Those are the, those are big games, man. It's just... I want to see a win against a really big, really good team. I want to see a win against the best team in, in the fucking league. The team that knocked us out of the goddamn fucking finals last year. I want to see that. And I know I sound like a broken record, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record. I really apologize, and, and I'm, I'm just... I should set me off that... I don't know. Yeah. Congratulations, uh... Luka Doncic for your uh, four straight thirty point uh, triple level. Did you did you did you win? Oh look at that, Luka Doncic with the four straight thirty point triple double. And guess what? Lost to Indiana. Go fuck yourself. One thirty seven to one twenty. You put thirty point triple double up, and you lose one thirty seven to one twenty. You put up a thirty point triple double for the fourth time in a row. And you lose to Indiana. Well, Indiana is number eight in the Eastern Conference. Come on. Get the fuck out of here with that. Unbelievable. Wait, really? Uh, and look at that. Cavs beat the Celtics by one. Ridiculous. They blew a 22 point lead. Nine minutes left. That's, you see, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're not going <clears> to. <throat> we're not going to be able to catch the Mavericks. And the Mavericks is a, is a bad match. We don't want to face the Mavericks, man. We don't want to face the Mavericks. We don't want to face even the Pacers. I'll take anybody else but the. the 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 Cavs and and the fucking sorry I guess it's the Mavericks my bad I meant the Cavs uh, I don't want to face the Cavs and I don't want to face the fucking Pacers dude the Pacers are some shit you know they got shooters and they're 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 just the kind of team that we go up against and they fucking play an amazing game and beat us and then get beat by whoever the fuck they get they they play against Um. Wow, man. Yeah. So the Patty Mills signing that makes sense, right? That's not because of this guy. But yeah, that's enough, man. I mean, we we're good. We're good. We don't want to really stretch this out too long because uh, we still got plenty of Hiko Duda left for the rest of the season. There's a lot of Hiko Duda coming up, man. We got Mavericks on Thursday, seven thirty p.m. <clears throat> we'll be here for that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and then that's going to rock the back-to-back. So you know how it is when we have the back-to-back, uh, depending on, well, no, it's, you know, it's early, so I sh- hopefully I can get it done, and if I, I'll do it, I'll get it done before, uh, midnight. I just hate it when I do Hikul Tuta after midnight and then have another one, because then it's like two Hikul Tutas on the same day. It's really annoying. Um, but yeah, we'll be here for the Mavericks game, because that's a big game, and we'll be here for the Thunder, too, because that's also a big game. So we'll, we're going to do it up for you, right, because we, you guys deserve it, and, uh, we uh, you know, we 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 gotta start getting warmed up just like Jimmy for the playoffs, man. Because we're not gonna miss not one goddamn he could do that for the playoffs, okay? So uh, so yeah, so we are back Thursday after the game after Mavericks. That's how we do it. Um, you know, I'm 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 excited. I I'm happy where we're at. You know, everybody should be fine. But again, you know, we need. I don't know, man. I, I know I keep saying that. We need a quality win, and, and we have had quality wins and quality wins in bunches, but I, I know you know what I mean, that, like, all of these wins against all of these teams that we're going against pale in comparison to just one win against the Nuggets and against the Celtics. We don't have that shot against the Celtics anymore. So that's why it's really fucking important to win this game against the Nuggets, man. We got to show the rest of the, the league that we can 
we can reach another level. Because right now, we can only reach a certain level with these guys that is like, it's good enough to beat everybody. And it's even good enough to beat, you know, the best once in a while, but not regularly. And if we can't beat these teams regularly the way they beat us regularly, what are we doing, man? We don't have enough. So, that's something to really consider. And, and I know I don't want to fucking be Debbie Downer and shit. And I want to be happy with this win. And I'm, I'm like happy the way that he's playing. Butler's playing great. You know, we're getting guys in. And we're, you know, we're still having to fucking, you know, get guys acquainted with everybody at this point in the season. But still, you know how the system works, man. If they fit in our system, they will come in and they will fucking produce. So, we don't have to worry about that shit. But... I'm going to be, I just, I want a quality fucking win against a quality fucking opponent. All of these guys, even if we lose the Mavericks and Dunther and we lose to the Pistons once and we lose to the Cavs and that tells you nothing, man. If we win against the fucking Nuggets, man, that tells me a lot. That tells me that we can, hey, we can at least beat these guys in our home court. And you got to give me something, man. You got to give us something. And I know I, I saying some shit with all these wins, man. I know how great these this teams are playing. We're set. We're fucking six and one coming out of the fucking. We're we're five and one coming out of the fucking uh, the All Star break. If we went to if we went against the Mavericks, we'll be seven and one. I mean six and one. No, we're sort of five and one. So we were six and one. That's that's great. That's a good record. That we've been kicking ass, man. But that one fucking loss to the Nuggets, man. That's a really big stain. That's a really big. Fucking bird shit. You just washed the entire fucking car and you are banging on fucking South Beach, blinging it out, man. And it doesn't matter how shiny and beautiful that fucking, you know, Supra is, bro. If there's a giant fucking shit stain on the fucking car, so just on one spot, like a bird took a humongous fucking shit on the windshield or on the fucking, like, somewhere on the car, everybody's eyes are going to go to the shit stain. Everybody's eyes are going to go to the bird shit on the windshield. They're not going to look at the entire beautiful fucking Toyota, Toyota Supra that looks amazing with its suit. It's, just, it's fucking got an awesome, it's just beautiful. Thousand horsepower. No one's going to give a shit because there's shit on the window. Don't freak out, man. Just freak out or something. 